What's going on, One City Church? How y'all feeling this morning? I'm so excited to be here. I got to get a couple of things out of the way. Yes, it's June and I'm wearing a sweatshirt. I don't understand youth culture. I don't understand 100, 100 degree Fahrenheit temperature and we're going to wear sweatshirts. But you know what? I got one back from YFN and I'm in the Cool Kids Club now. So I am wearing a sweatshirt. I also want to tell you that I'm wearing a pair of tennis shoes because you guys are used to me being in a dress and heels. I'm wearing a pair of tennis shoes because my nephew is here all the way from Colorado, Denver, Colorado. This young man, 13 years old, jumped on a plane by himself for the first time in Denver, flew here to Beaumont to get on a bus or on some vans and drive to YFN and have a life-changing experience with Jesus. And he said, Aunt Christy, he's a sneakerhead. If you don't know what that is, just look it up. He said, Aunt Christy, you should wear your dunks. Anybody know what dunks are? Like I dunk Oreos. That's, my, that's dunks for me. But I have one cool pair of tennis shoes, and evidently they pass muster. And so today I was wearing my sweatshirt and my dunks because I am now part of the Cool Kids Club. Somebody give me a shout. So I just wanted to get that out of the way because I walked into a production meeting this morning, and uh, Ann Gaspard looked at me. She said, you're wearing a sweatshirt. I said, I know, I know. It's just stretch your hands this way and pray. Uh, there's a guarantee if you want to be in the first row, you're going to get slung with sweat. It's going to happen. So just bear with me this morning. God, I just feel the presence of God in here. How many of you are excited about what God's doing in young people? How many of you are excited in what you're seeing in the growth and in the transformation of the children and the youth at One City Church? We have a phenomenal nursery department. We have a phenomenal, beautiful new uh, kids facility. And we are so excited about uh, Pastor Micah coming on staff. And we have incredible young people here. And that's something to be excited about. That's not something to be um, uh, complacent about. That's not something to be like, well, I don't know about these kids today. Maybe you need to get off of the news channel and start looking at the students in the room, so looking at the students in your house, looking at the students in your sphere, looking at the students around you. Maybe instead of looking at everything that's going wrong, you should start speaking life into the kids that are being raised up because they are equipped for this generation. They're purposed for right now. God was not shocked about what's going on in the economy. God is not shocked about what's going on around the world. God was not shocked when he decided to birth them forth on this people planet during this time. He wasn't shocked. He wasn't scared. He said, I've got a young group of people that I'm going to appoint for this season and I'm going to raise them up in houses of prophecy and I'm going to raise them up in houses with giftings and I'm going to send generals like Pastor Feldshad, Pastor Suzanne to watch over them and brood over them and pray over them so when they rise up under a really heavy disgusting darkness in this world there is a backbone inside of them that's called the Holy Ghost that can stand up when other things bend and break it's a good day at One City Church, amen? amen? Go with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12 and verse 6. And if you wouldn't mind, you know it's my custom to stand for the reading of the word. For the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord stands forever. You can plant your feet on it. You can plant your life on it. You plant your family on it. Everything else will shake and everything else will fall, but you can stand on the word. That's why I do this whenever I read the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 6, starting with verse 6 through 8. God's marvelous grace imparts to each one of us. God's marvelous grace imparts to who? Each one of us. Don't you love that he doesn't leave anybody out? God's marvelous grace imparts to each one of us varying gifts. So if God has given you the gift of grace, of prophecy, activate your gift by using the portion of faith you have to prophesy. Verse 7, if, you have, if your grace gift is serving, then thrive in serving others well. If you have the grace gift of teaching, then be actively teaching and training others. Verse 8, if you have the grace gift of encouragement, then use it often, often to encourage others. If you have the grace gift to give, meet the other's needs, then, uh, then may your, you prosper in your generosity without any fanfare. And if you have the gift of leadership, be passionate about your leadership. And if you have the gift of showing compassion, then flourish in your cheerful display of compassion. This morning, I want to speak to you from the thought, engage, don't spectate. 
engage. Don't spectate. Look at your neighbor and say, engage. Don't spectate. Let's pray. Awesome God, in the matchless name of Jesus, we thank you for your spirit that is already here. We thank you for your word that it destroys yokes of bondage. Do what only you can do in this place today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Today is an amazing day. Can you believe that? Can you believe that today is an amazing day? It's a, it's a day of activation. It's a day where anything is possible. I believe that anything is possible. I believe that. I don't just sing it in a song because I've sang it since I was five. I don't just believe it because I, I've heard it so many times. I have a root of the foundation of the word of God inside of my being that reminds me that all things are possible to him that believes. So today at One City Church in this sanctuary, anything is possible. I believe that. I believe that. I believe if you press in, you can have, this can be a breakthrough day for you. And some of us in here need a breakthrough like we need air. Some people in this room, you need a breakthrough like you need your very next breath. And I believe that today can be that day. Things maybe have, they've been mundane. Maybe lethargy has set into your soul. Woo! I know that feeling, lethargy, laziness, uh, uh, complacency. It comes in, it nestles in, it gets you comfortable like a nice warm blanket and it gets you completely out of your zone, completely out of your power, completely out of your anointing and then you're bitter and talking about everybody else. But today can be a breakthrough day. Things, lethargy, mundane thinking, going through the motions of walking out your Christianity. Just going through the motions. And there is something about discipline. Discipline when I don't feel like it. Discipline when I do. Discipline when I'm up and discipline when I'm down. But I'm not talking about that kind of in, uh, uh, mature Christian life. I'm talking about punch the clock Christianity. I did my due diligence. I came to church on Sunday. But I don't. nothing else changes in my life. But I believe that today it can change because God is in this place. Is anybody else with me? God is in this place. God is in this place. And there is nothing normal. There is nothing mundane. There is nothing quiet. There is nothing shallow. There is nothing difficult. Oh, when his presence is in the room. God's presence is in this place. Maybe you need to inform yourself that the God of all creation, the one who sits on the circle of the world, is right here, right now at One City Church. Ooh. This morning, I want to introduce you to some incredible young people, some, some world changers, some world changers filled with the Holy Ghost. Anybody feel with the Holy Ghost in here? Anybody feel with the Holy Ghost? When's the last time you prayed in tongues? Just wondering, because there's accountability also with maturity, I'm just saying. Anybody feel with the Holy Ghost? I know, me too. I got filled with the Holy Ghost when I was at summer camp, right before I went into high school. The summer before I went into high school, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I remember laying in the top bunk on, in a cabin, just, I was so like pumped up. I think I prayed in tongues all night. There's something important, something impactful, something powerful about getting away when you're a, a young person to a youth camp environment. It changes you. It's a marking place. I can tell you I was 13. I can tell you it was in Laverne, Oklahoma. Look it up. It's about as big as your pinky. But God met me at that place. I was 13. It was a marking moment. And by the way, all of you that are in here that are parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, we will be going to YFN again next summer. They will be going from junior high and senior high. I'm telling you this so you're not surprised when you hear the announcement and you make excuses why your kids can't come. We will be going again next summer. It will not be an inexpensive camp, but it will be worth the investment that you make into the future marking moment of your student, of your child. It will be worth it. It will be worth it. You heard of it from, anyway, I don't have time. Right here. So right now, <laughs> They just come back from camp. They went to Youth for the Nations, which is um, a summer camp at Christ for the Nations in Dallas. We've gone there several years now. And I'm going to ask, uh, well, Pastor Justin, Pastor Esther, along with a small army of our core leaders here at One City Church, took 35 kids. Y'all, you better be in intercession about that. Y'all better make some noise about that. About, about those adult leaders. You better go, like, give them a gospel handshake with a $20 bill in it and be like, bless the Lord. Take your wife to dinner. <laughs> took 35 of our kids all the way to Dallas 
to encounter the living God. I want to know where my students are at. We have any students in the building at One City Church? That's what I'm talking about. Let's make some noise. So I love that. If I told you guys to make some noise, I'd have to say it four times, right? (laughs) Make some noise, One City Youth. I want you to know that you were crafted. This is a word for you. This is a word for the students in the room, and you're in different places, but this is for every one of you. You were crafted out of eternity for this exact time in history, and you are purposed to bring forth the word, whether it's in preaching, prophesying, praying, or flipping burgers at McDonald's. The anointing of God is on your life to bring change into the spaces that you go into, and don't let hell tell you anything else. So right now I'm going to ask if I can have Pastor Justin and Pastor Esther and all of our students come up here because we're going to hear from a few of them. They're going to come right down here in the front. So I'm watching my time right down here, like just fill it up. Y'all, why don't you give a big clap for these kids while they're coming? All the way around, all these amazing young people. Look at them. And this isn't all of them. Some of the kids came from other churches in other parts of our city. And we're so glad that they could come with us and encounter a living God in an immersive environment. Five days immersed in the presence of God. Five days in a place that was prepared for them, saturated with prayer and saturated with worship. And then to, for these young people to go in and have an immersive experience and, and, and encounter the living God. We've got all of these kids, every single last one of them, have a testimony, and I would encourage you to stop them in the hallway, and don't be weird, but just stop them in the hallway and ask them about what God did in their life, and it doesn't have to be weird or spooky, and it may not sound like, oh, and then the fire of God. It may have been like, I had some unforgiveness towards my dad, and now it's gone. That's a miracle. That's a life-changing miracle that happens, okay? So I encourage you to hear from all of them, but Pastor Justin and Pastor Esther, there's a few of them. Why don't you go ahead and help them out? Um, Boomer, come on up real quick, please. So we've asked uh, Jesse Church to kind of give a, um, his testimony. Um, he's a little nervous, so I'll Jesse. have Boomer come help me out. So uh, go ahead, Jesse. Okay, so on Monday, I, like, started out really strong, and I got prayed for. And the man who prayed for me, he said that I was going to, I was born to be a leader and to pray over people. Yeah. And then, like, on Tuesday and Wednesday, nothing really happened. But on Thursday, I prayed over Lucas, and God gave me a vision when I was praying over him. Basically, like, he gave me a vision in my mind, and I told Lucas it, too. And it was his dad, Pastor Justin, he was walking, and Lucas was just following in his footsteps the whole way. And basically... And he was basically saying that Lucas was going to grow up and be like his dad and be a pastor. Wow. Wow. This is Sophia, Sophia Cabrera. Um, I love you. Me too. So basically before YFN, um, I had a best friend and she went to school with me and me and her got in like a really, really big fight and we haven't talked in like, we didn't talk in like three months and it was like, she wasn't my best friend. And basically, she ended up going to YFN the same week as I did. And I remember on Monday, we saw each other, and, like, it was just nasty looks. It was not, it wasn't right. <laughs> That's honest. And then, um, honestly, and then after that, on Wednesday, the lady who was preaching, she told everybody to close their eyes and have a vision, and like, if they had one, you know. And so I had two. I had one, yeah. and it was a scrapbook, and it said the word forgiveness over and over and over again. And then the second one, um, It was a glass box, and I was at the altar, and everybody went there, and they all got Band-Aids and put it, like, wherever they had scars, like, mentally or physically. And so on Friday, um, I was just praying, and I was just praying, and I was thinking about her, and then my eyes were closed, and someone went up to me, and they gave me a hug, and I opened my eyes, and it was her. And so we made up, and so we're good now. Come on. Come on. That's major. How old are you, Sophia? Sophia's 13 and she's seeing visions from from the Lord. She has a a, a vision from God. Right there at youth camp, somebody imparted and said to the students in the room, close your eyes, close your eyes and ask the Holy Spirit to give you a vision. And one of our 13 year old young ladies, God showed her a vision. Don't tell me God doesn't use young people, that he doesn't speak to young people, that he doesn't flow gifts through young people. 
Next. And, and Jesse, how old are you? 13 and 14 years old, so. Now here's a 12 year old. My name's Lucas and I've grown up as a PK. It's really hard to be a PK. Like you're always in your parents' shadows and, and it's really hard. But on Monday, I was coming into life and thinking it's gonna be a good time and I was gonna get saved the same day as last year. But that all changed as soon as they hit Tuesday. The first day, uh, Pastor Quentin talked about fig leaves and how you need to remove them. And then Tuesday, they had an altar call and I went up. Someone prayed for me and that's when I got my, I could be able to speak in tongues. Woo! Come on! And then I go on a Wednesday, uh, the Pastor Quinn's wife, she ended up talking and uh, had someone come pray for me and he said that, uh, he had a vision and said that wherever your dad goes, you will follow. You're gonna follow his footsteps and be a preacher just like he did. Come on. And then we go Thursday. Um, I had, he came back up to me and he looked up what my name meant. He said, I meant light. I would be a leader and not a follower like I normally would be. I would be a leader to God. I would give the message. And then that's when Jesse came up to me and he told me the vision and that's when I changed. If you want to turn to Deuteronomy 28, 13, it says, the Lord, your God, will make you the leader among the nations and not a follower. You will always prosper and never fail. If you obey faithfully, all those commands that I am giving you today. It's fantastic. And Zoe. Zoe. Um, okay, so before I thin, I did have a lot of self-image issues. And even when, like, I would praise and worship, I would just, like, you know, sit there and just kind of stand there because I was embarrassed of praising and worship. But why should I be embarrassed of worshiping the one above, you know? Like, that's such an insane thing to me. So on the first day of YFN, I was just like, you know, whatever, I'm going to go up there to the front like I always do. Sat there, worship, did my little shimmy. And then the second day, she had an altar call. And I went up there and this random girl, she came over and prayed for me and she said to let all of the thoughts that weren't of God, like, go, like, leave my mind and that the image that I should see of myself should be the one that he sees of me. Yeah. And so that really hit me and I was crying. I was on the floor and it was just a whole lot, a whole lot. of. <laughs> and then on the last day, um, like, we had breakouts and... I just started like going around, turning, dancing, praising the Lord, shouting. Like there was a whole, like it was a lot. And I cried and I cried so much because I was put into a place where it was just me and Jesus. And I just sat there and I just danced and I danced my heart out and I cried. And it was just a feeling that I never felt before. And I'm so thankful for the people that were there and the people that prayed for me because I don't think I would be put in that position if I didn't go. So yeah. Come on. I, I want to I wanna kind of give you a little bit of what I, what, what I experienced real quick because I want to step on some toes real quick. Sorry, I'm not going to preach, but I'm going to step on some toes real quick. One of the things I learned was that um, that was poured into us. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody in this auditorium, we got to be a bridge to hold the weight of these young people because what's happening is we are living in a time and a generation that they're going through things that we've never been through. Don't say that you've been through what they've been through because it's not. Whenever you're living in a time, the LTGBTQ community, you're living in, um, you're living into social media issues, you're living into um, uh, people telling them that they're not worthy enough, they're not good enough, they're living in a harder time. I'm gonna tell you something. Um, it's our job as a congregation, as parents, as leaders, to, to make an example for these students. When Lucas and Shiloh were really toddlers, they were learning to speak and talk. But how do they learn and speak and talk? They learn and speak and talk from watching me. They see me watch and talk. So that's how they learn to talk. These students, they learn to dance. They learn to praise Jesus. They learn to read their Bibles. They learn to speak watching us. We are the examples. This whole church, we're an example. So pour into these students. It's worth Come it, I on. promise. That's awesome. Hey, let me ask you kids something real quick. Thank you, Pastor Justin. Let me ask you students something. How many of y'all got your prayer language when you were at camp this week? Raise your hand. Come on. Come on. That's exciting. How many of y'all, I got to ask you another question. How many of y'all received a prophetic word from somebody at camp? All right, come on. I got to ask you another question. How many of y'all gave a prophetic word to somebody at camp? 
Okay, okay. How many of y'all begin to see spiritual gifts that were in you begin to open up that you didn't necessarily know were there? Spiritual, like giving up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You guys better make some noise and not just for them. You need to thank God in this place. We need to thank God in this place. Thank you, God, for young people who are pressing in to your presence. We need to thank God for that. Gosh, you guys are amazing. Let's give it up. Let's give a big clap for them on their way back to their seats. But you guys don't go too far because I'm going to need you in a minute. Yes! Let's give God a praise for breakthrough. Let's give God a praise for breaking bondage. Let's give God a praise for setting them free. Let's give God a praise for calling them out of darkness and calling them into the kingdom. Let's give God a praise because he's worthy. Let's give God a praise because he's holy. Let's give God a praise because there's no one like him. I don't know about you, but I am going to engage with the spirit of God and not spectate. Woo! You may be seated just for a moment. I had a parent text me. I have one point in this message today. One, because I knew we had so much going on. One, I had a parent text me, a couple of parents text me, and they, in essence, they were asking, how do we keep their fire going? How do we keep their fire going? That was the right question to ask, right? Because let me be really honest. I'm a parent of a 14-year-old, and she has a relationship with Jesus that's her own, not mine. She has a walk that she has to walk that's her own, not mine, but I am still her leader. And so when she comes into this place, or when we, when all these students come home, and they've been in an environment that is um, just electric with the Spirit of God, that's set up and captivated for them for five days. That's not normal, right? Like, we don't get to go to camp for five days. You know what I mean? But when they come back in here, the people that, that are leading them is the people in this room, the atmosphere that sets is not their job to set, it's ours. The engagement with the Spirit of God is not their job, it's ours. Because then in, I don't know, however many years, 10, 15 years, you have a, a Pastor Micah Perry getting ready to be the children's pastor who was 12 years old at camp and 6 years old when he got saved here. The environment that we establish, that we bring in, that we, 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 the level that we raise for them becomes the floor that they launch from. And it's important. It's important. Looking back at uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 6, in the Passion, I want you to see something. I want you to see action words everywhere. Action words. God's marvelous, I'm going to read, God's marvelous grace imparts to us gifts, right? Gifts, gifts of prophecy, gifts of uh, healing, gifts of tongues, and interpretation, other kinds of gifts. God's marvelous grace imparts to us gifts. He gives it. But if you keep reading down, you see action, 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 action that engages with the giving of the gift. God's marvelous grace imparts to each one of us varying gifts. So if God has given you the gift, uh, the grace gift of prophecy, the word says, activate by using give your gift, by using the portion of faith you have to prophesy. So God gives the gift, but then we can sit there and do nothing with it. If we don't engage the gift, there's no activation of the gift. That's really important. Some of us are waiting for God to just like, like move us. It just move us, God, just move me. And God said, I've already imparted to you the gift. And every single thing else in this text is action on the part of the receiver of the gift. And not only that, you may disqualify yourself, but this says to every one of us. Every one of us. So let me read you what the actions are. God gives the gift of the grace gift of prophecy. Activate it by using your portion of faith to have uh, that you have to prophesy. If your gift giving gift, if your grace gift, excuse me, is serving that God gives you, then your action is thrive in serving others well. It's not wait till someone asks you to serve. If the gift is given, it is our job to activate the gift. Engage. Don't be a spectator. Then at the end of your life, you're like, God, just use me. God, just use me. Just use me. God, just use me. And God opens every opportunity and gives you for it. But there's no engagement or activation. And we wonder why we're dissatisfied and feel mundane. <laughs> if, 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 this is verse 7. If you have the grace gift of teaching, here's, here's your responsibility, my responsibility, then be actively teaching and training others. 
Like there is a, God is a collaborator. He's a collaborator, a co-laborer. God is, collaborates with us. He's faithful on his part to give us the gift. And then it is our responsibility to engage or to sit on a sideline. To engage or to, to, to be a spectator and have an opinion and no, and no action. Oh, Jesus. Well, I don't know. You know, it's fun to watch the kids. They come in. Isn't that nice? Give it a couple of weeks. You know, they'll be back to te- texting up in the balcony. Are you sitting on the back row texting somebody right now? Have you even had a Sunday where you engaged in worship? I'm not saying that just to you. I'm saying that to me, to us. I'm just wondering because we said, I remember coming home from youth camp when I was 13. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And man, I was, you know, I'm still kind of like that. I didn't have on a sweatshirt, though. What in the world? And I remember a lady at our church, a husband and wife, they were really nice. They sat in the same place, which all of us do that. That's nothing wrong with it. They were a little older. To me, they were ancient relics. Now I know they probably were in their 60s. To me, they were ancient relics because I was like 13. Gosh, isn't that terrible? And I remember coming home, and I was so on fire. God, y'all could tell me nothing. And it was just early signs of what was in me. And I was so engaged, and I was so excited, and I was so on fire. And I remember this sweet saint, she came over to me, and she patted my hand. And she said, oh, you'll calm down one of these days. <laughs> Newsflash. But do you know, I still remember those words. And if I had the wherewithal to receive those words, what if I would have thought sitting there, Every week, not engaging, not serving, not engaging in worship, not expressing my praise, not giving words or speaking words or smiling or engaging with people. What if I thought that was normal when she told me, you'll calm down one of these days? Now, I have just a strike, just a strike of rebel in me. I'm not rebellious, but I got a strike of it in me where I'm like, I'll show you. So, you know, like, I'll stand right next to her like, But back then it was like, when the spirit of the Lord moves on my heart, right? That's what I was going to do. I would dance like day. (laughs) Baby, tell me I'm going to calm down. I wish you would. But, and then I know that some of that is my personality, but some of that is also our responsibility. Some of that is our responsibility as, as co-laborers with Christ. So for us to activate our gifts, we have to engage and we must break free from sidelines and step into action. God's grace has ignited a fire within you at some point in your life. Even the smallest, tiniest, littlest whisper of an ember can be fanned into a flame, but you have to engage in the process. We want to be able to just, one thing that happens I think sometimes in spirit-filled churches, and I've been in a spirit-filled church my whole life, I am that, so when I say that I'm speaking of my own life, is that we wait for God to move us. Well, I don't, or to feel. I don't feel like worshiping. I don't feel. It's not my jam. I don't know this song. I don't feel. I don't feel. I don't feel. Do you know that feelings are liars? And there's a, there's a discipline to the fact that I will bless the Lord at all times right? I will. It's an act of your will. I'm willing myself to bless the Lord. I'm willing myself a month after my dad's death to bless the Lord at all times. It may look different when you're in grief. It may look different when you're in sorrow. It may look different, but I will. I choose. I make a decision. I don't have a feeling about it. And so like, well, this this song was when this day and the haze was too much. Did you bless the Lord? Oh, anyway, sorry. Pastor, I know you're watching. Just, it's okay. (laughs) We have to let go of passivity and we have to embrace a spirit of active participation. It's time for us, church, to worship with passion and not look at the young people when they come home from camp for a couple of weeks like they're in a glass fishbowl and think that it's so great and so wonderful for them, but not engage ourselves. And and think, well, they don't understand that I've got these bills and I've got this health issue and I've got this financial situation and I've got this marital problem. They've got theirs too at the at the age where in the range where they are, and we don't understand their understand theirs. But the truth of the matter, the way that we get through it is to engage 
It's to engage with God. It's to engage in worship. It's to engage in praise. It's to engage with the word. It's to engage with other believers. It's not to have a critical spirit and sit back and look at other people like they're in a fishbowl, waiting for their fire to, you'll calm down one of these days. It's time. It's time for us to do that with a zeal and a fervor. We have to activate our faith and watch the mighty work of God. We have to engage and not spectate. Students at YFN, if you, if you don't engage, so here's the thing. We're like, well, they were, we saw the videos and they were just jumping. At YFN, if you don't engage in worship, you're the weirdo. You know what I mean? Like, you're the weirdo if you go to, and, because the whole room is like, boom, 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 right? You know, like they're jumping and all that, and they're worshiping, and they're on their face, and they're getting hands laid on them, and they're on the floor. So if you're not engaging, you're the weirdo. But then you have to come home. And at church, if you do engage, do you feel like the weirdo? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's our job. It's our responsibility as believers to set an example and to also, and to model things for our students. And to be, let me tell you right over here, thank you, Lord. Uh, right over here, Jesse, he was the first one to give his testimony. And um, Jesse, did, he did a great job. It's the first time you've probably ever talked on a microphone in front of a room full of people. 13 or whatever, 12. And Boomer walked over and stood with him. And you're like, why did Boomer walk over and stand there and then go walk off, right? Because Boomer knew that Jesse was a little nervous. And they'd had a conversation. The Holy Spirit spoke to Boomer before service. And, and it's a long story. But anyway, he went and talked to Jesse. And he said, well, I'll come stand with you. How many of us will engage in a conversation with a young person who isn't ours? And say, that, you're nervous? That's okay. I'll come stand by you. And I don't even have to tell anybody why I came up and stood by you. I'm just going to come stand and be, give you a little bit of my strength so you can step into something you've never done before and become something that God's never, that you've never seen before. And I'm going to stand right beside you. And if you need to touch your, touch your elbow on my elbow just to know that I'm here, I got you. And if your hands shake, that's okay. That's okay, my man. The first time I got the microphone, my hand shook too. Yes. Oh, yes, it did. Oh, yes, it did. He came up and he stood as a man of God, next to a young man. That's what we have to do. That's engaging. So the students say they're, they're, you know, they're engaged, and when they're, they're engaged, there's this expectation, there's anticipation and an excitement for God. I want us to be, I want to challenge us to, instead of just being in the routine, and I love, like, I love calendars and I love plans, like I do, but I also think that maybe on that calendared plan when you're getting ready for church on Sunday morning, you start to begin to thank God with expectation of meeting him here. And when, thank God, not like, oh, I hope I like the song. And if I feel the spirit, I'll lift my hands. What if I lift my hands in the sanctuary? Because you're worthy whether I feel you or not. Whether I feel you or not, you are worthy. Whether I feel you or not, you are holy. Whether I feel you or not, you are righteous. Whether I feel you or not, you are mighty. Whether, I, whether you answered the prayer that I thought you would answer in the way that I wanted you to or not, you're still holy. Whether, I, whether my bank account is, is giving me stress and anxiety, you're still worthy. If I'm de still dealing with a sin issue, you're still holy. If I'm, if I'm dealing with, a, with a, my own darkness in my own heart, you're still God. And the way to get out of this is to go this way and I'm going to engage and not not just sit on the sideline and spectate I'm gonna engage and if that means I got to come down to the front I'm gonna come down to the front some of us are so pious and so like proper maybe that's the right word that we aren't willing to say I'm a wreck undone and if I don't come down here and worship my way through this I'll never make it if I don't come down here and say God I'm gonna give you every ounce of everything that's in my heart right now and it's dark and it's hard and it's ugly and this I want to give this to you thank you Jesus so we had the answer when I was thinking about it because we do have plans and we do have things for your students all throughout the rest of the summer and going into fall and I believe God's going to do incredible things with these kids so don't think we don't have a plan we have a plan but I also want to tell you that the answer to that, that text message as I mold it over, the answer to how do we keep things going on some level. By the way, nobody lives on the mountain. Just FYI, 
When, 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 when Moses was called up to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments, his face changed, the glory he received from the Lord, but he had to come down and use the glory and use that anointing and use what was imparted into him to do the work. So don't expect anybody to live on a mountain because sometimes you got to come down and get to work. The anointing is not for a feel good. The anointing is for purpose. So anyway, so one of the, the answer when I was thinking at some level, how do we keep things going? It's to engage and not to spectate, to engage in worship, even when the worship team isn't playing your style, to engage in prayer, even when you don't feel like it. I'm going to just tell you this real quick and I'll make it fast. Most of you know that just a few weeks ago, my, my dad passed and we didn't expect him to. And it was really hard. It's, it's still really hard. And, um, some of the first prayers that I prayed after the prayers that I was praying weren't answered the way I wanted them to be, um, was, I don't really feel like talking to you. I don't really feel like talking to you. But my life is anchored to your book. And so I'm going to go to that, and I'm going to say, I'm going to be real honest, my heart doesn't feel like talking to you. But the disciplined person in me is saying, you are still God, and you are sovereign, and I don't get it. And I'm sad, like on a deep, deep level sad. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed in the way things went down. But you are still God, and you are my God, and you are sovereign, alone reign. You alone reign. You are sovereign over my life. And so even though right now I don't really feel like talking to you, I'm going to engage in this conversation. Because the only way out of this sorrow is that way. It's through you. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So we have to engage in, in worship. We have to engage in praise. We have to engage in the word. We have to engage in prayer even when you don't feel like it. We have to engage and not spectate. This is your one and only life. It's your one and only life. I remember being in a Bible college and somebody saying, Professor, Professor, are these the last days? And he said, I don't know if they're the last days, but I do know they're your only days. They're your only days. That's all you get. That's what you got. What will you do? Romans chapter 12 starts out in verse 6. To every single one of us, all of us, gifts have been, grace gifts have been given. Everyone in the room, not one of us is left out. What will be the decision that we make to activate and engage in those gifts that God has given us? And before we conclude... Before we, before we end, and I'm, I'm hurrying, I want to speak to some hearts. I feel like, I felt like the Lord wanted me to say this. I want to speak to some hearts directly that are saying, that's nice for them. That's nice for them. Uh, it's too late for me. Um, I'm too old. I miss my moment. Um, I've made too many mistakes. Nobody would understand. And I just sense that there's someone here feeling discouraged, thinking that it's too late to activate the gift that God has put in you. And you think that you've slept on it or you've done too, too much or you, you, you're just too late for the purpose of God on your life. And I want you to listen and I want you to listen to this preacher and I want you to understand something that I'm going to say to you. The gifts that God has given you, they are for you and you are not left out and it is not too late. And if you're not dead, God's not done. If you're not dead, God's not done. Somebody needs to take a hold of that and put, pull it. You need to pull that into your life. If God's not dead, if I'm not dead, if I'm not dead, God's not done. And I'm still breathing. I'm still breathing. So I know he's not done with me. So today can be a marking moment in your life that you say, I am going to not sleep on what God deposited in me. I am going to engage with the gift of God in my life. I'm going to engage with the spirit of God. And I am not going to sit as a spectator in the kingdom of God not for one more day I want to know if anybody in this house receives that word oh you better make some noise like you're 13 in that youth camp yeah! yes yes who who it's not too late for him to work it out for you it's not too late it's not too late I wonder if I could get um Pastor David uh, to come and, and if I could have the students come down and the prayer teams, we're going to pray. And I, you know, here's the deal. None of these kids are, are, are perfect. Neither are you. You could pick out every single flaw in them and then go look in the mirror and, and see the reflection. 
So I, we're not judging anybody and we're not trying to say they're perfect, but we are saying that these kids have been in an immersive environment for five days where the glory of God poured out over their lives, where the glory of God whew, saturated every single one of them. Each one of these students, stand up, had a life-giving moment, had a moment where they engaged with the presence of God. Every single one of them. So I want you to stand on your feet. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, God. Nobody like you. No one beside you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift our hands all over the room. Oh, you're worthy. But I don't lift my hands. You, well, then you don't engage. Father, we glorify your name. There's no one like you. We bless you, Jesus. Hearable shame. Today, we've witnessed how the fire of God's Spirit has ignited the hearts of our young people. Activating gifts inside of them. Activating gifts, setting them free setting them free, moving them into activation and releasing of what has been imparted to them. And now it's time for us to be able to experience that firsthand. Thank you, Jesus. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 17, Luke begins to quote the prophet Joel. And he says, in the last days, come on somebody, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. What you have before you are young men and young women where the spirit of God has been poured out upon them and they will will prophesy and they will dream dreams and they will declare the word of the Lord and in this place today I want you to know that we're we we you and me we have the opportunity to come down and be prayed for by these young people today is your day to step out of the ordinary and into the extraordinary plan that God has for you today is your day for fresh fire if you've been feeling just mundane in your in your spirit walk in your walk with the Lord if you need a fresh touch from God, this is your moment. 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 Don't wait. Don't wait. Woo. Right now, I'm going to invite you to come down. If you need prayer, if you want prayer, if you want these kids, these young people to lay hands on you, if you need a breakthrough, now is your time. If you need a fresh touch from God, now is your time. If you need a word from the Lord, I would say now is your time. I would not stay in my seat. I would make a motion to the altar, to these young people, and to these adults that are standing with them. Action, activate, come on.